Hello friends, welcome to my video. Today I am going to talk about delegates. It's one of the most important concept in C-Sharp. It seems a bit difficult in the beginning, but once you understand it, it will seem easy and you will realize its flexibility and power. In this video, we will see what's delegate, how we can implement in a program and what benefits it provide and many more things associated with it. Before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon. That way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. What is delegate in Cisha? Delegate is a reference type that is derived from the system.delegate and its instances can be used to call a method with matching signature. What does it mean? Okay, let's understand with the help of this example. Let's define the delegate first. So, how we are going to define? We need to write public delegate int my delegate index int y. Okay, if you have noticed, its signature looks like method signature, right? Yes, you are right. Only difference is that it has delegate keyword. Let's suppose we have a method called add method that accepts two parameters int x int y. It performs some operations and then it just returns the output which is of the int data type, right? So if you see the add method signature and the my delegate signature both matches, right? So my delegate can successfully point to this add method, right? Let's suppose delegate signature does not match with the method and if you try to point delegate to that method what will happen? It will throw the compile time error. That's why it is called type save function pointer, right? So whenever we try to give delegate reference to a method, we need to make sure that it matches with the method signature. Then only it will be successfully referenced to it, right? Okay, so now we have seen what is delegate, how we can define the delegate, how we need to make sure that delegate signature should match with the method signature so that we can successfully reference to it. Okay, so now we will see how we can use it in a program. How to implement delegate in C-sharp. So there are just three steps by which we can easily implement the delegate in C-sharp. Before going through the steps, we see first the add method over here. Because we are planning to define delegate that could point to add method. This add method accepts two parameters, int x, int y, and it performs some operation and returns the result which is of the int data type, right? Okay, now see the steps one by one. As a part of the first step, we need to define the delegate signature same like method signature. So we need to write something like this public delegate int my delegate int x int y. If you see the parameters which is of the int data type x and y, right? It matches with add method parameters int x int y. So it matches. Similarly, that return data type, right? Which is of int for the my delegate signature and also this add method signature is having this int return type. So, signature of the my delegate and the signature of the add method matches. So, it could point successfully to this add method. So, we define the delegate with the matching signature what we are having the add method. We have had this statement public delegate int my delegate int x y. As a part of the second step, we need to instantiate the delegate and assign the actual methods to it. So there are two ways. The first way we need to assign the method via the constructor. For this, we are going to write something like this. My delegate obj my delegate is equal to new my delegate and add. Here we are passing method add right in a constructor. So yeah, that's so that is the first way. The second way is we just need to simply assign this add method. So we need to write something like this. My delegate obj my delegate is equal to add. So this is a simple way of assigning method. Okay, as a part of the third step, we just need to invoke or call the method through the delegate instance. Again, here there are two ways. The first way we need to give a direct call, right? For this, we need to write something like this obj my delegate, and we need to pass this parameter. Here, parameter first is 3, the second parameter is 4, right? We are going to pass this value so that it will reference to the add method, perform some add operations and then gives the output. And whatever the output that we are going to receive by this calling this uh, delegate reference. Okay, so we are going to store those result set into this result variable. So that is the one way by the direct call. The second way we need to use this invoke method. Again, invoke method, we need to write obj my delegate delegate dot invoke method. And we need to pass the parameter. So either way, I mean, if you are going to call this via the direct call or maybe using the invoke method. 
output we are going to get the same because it is just pointing to the add method only whatever the add method operation it is doing it is always do whether it it, it got called from you know direct call or whether it got invoked via this invoke method so whatever the output we are going to receive we are just going to you know store it into this result variable so here the result would be seven because we are going to pass this three and four value right to this add method and this add operation just you know perform this addition operation three and plus four right is equal to seven so seven as an output we are going to receive it and then we are going to store into this result variable right so we have seen how to implement delegate in the csap in just three steps right so we need to keep in mind we need to just first define the delegate signature that matches with the method signature number one number two we need to instantiate the delegate and assign the actual methods to that we have seen the two way right the first way assigning the method via constructor and the second way we just you know simply assigning the method the third step is invoke or call the method through the delegate instance we can give a direct call or maybe you know we can use this invoke method like either way we are going to you know get the result right so this is the steps that we need to implement while we are going to use delegate in the C sharp, right? Okay, so let's see all those things in Visual Studio in action. Okay, so here we are on Visual Studio. I have created one console application delegate demo that has program.cs file. If you see, there is a class called program, it has main method, right? There is another method, add method. Add method is nothing but the static method that accepts two parameter int x and int y perform the addition operation and returns the output in the form of int data type right its return type is int so as we as we discussed uh, the delegate can be you know implemented in three way step right three steps so if you see the step one we need to define the delegate I have defined the delegate public delegate int my delegate int x int y. If you see the signature of this my delegate, it matches with the signature of the add method, right? So it could point to this add method. Okay. So as a part of the second step, we need to instantiate the delegate and assign the method to it. So here I have you know instantiate this delegate. So for that we have written my delegate or vj delegate is equal to new my delegate. And then we are passing add method as a in, a in a constructor so that this object delegate has a reference of this add method right so as a part of step three we need to call a method using the delegate instance so here i have called this method obj delegate and passing this parameter x and y here x value is five and y value is seven okay so obj delegate is nothing but a delegate instance so we are just giving this you know parameter x and y and eventually it calls to the add method that basically accepts these parameters x and y and perform this addition and gives the output so once this output you know get received we are storing into this result variable and then we are printing into this console window addition of x and y is and finally that that is the result right so let's start this program and see the output into the console window so i just click this start button so now if you see this uh, uh, output got appeared into this console window the first, basically the delegate worked and you know it called internally to this add method the add method you know perform that addition operation and gives the output and this output we have collected into the result variable and then we have printed into this console window and that's what it got appeared into this console window right let me close this okay so if you see uh, all those things like you know step one step two step three we have written and you know it successfully called this add method via this delegate instance right so here we have seen how to implement delegates in a program but you must be thinking why to write delegate just for calling add method only right we could directly call add method without using delegates right yeah you're right but here it's just a simple example by which i'm explaining how to implement delegate so that you could understand the concept once you understand this basic concept you could apply delegates concept in real-time project 
and you would realize the delegate potential how it solves the business problem right okay so let's see another example to experience the benefits in real time business scenario okay so here we will see real time use of the delegates delegates are heavily used in framework development as a callback so here i am trying to mimic a simple framework library called food order tracking library right it has one delegate called a status delegate that accepts one input parameter and its return type is void apart from that there is a food order tracking class that has get food status method that where i passed a status delegate as a parameter we have for loop that will execute five times in for loop i called sleep method that will make thread to sleep for 2 seconds and then it assigns the i value to food status variable and at last status delegate instance calls the callback method that delegates points to right okay let's move to the program.cs file okay let's consider this as a client class that uses this library that's why i have added this statement over here using food order tracking library it means i have imported this you know library in this class so that i can use its method and whatever classes is there under this you know library so in program class in main method i have instantiated this food order tracking class and i have gave the instance name as obj food order tracking right with the help of this instance name i am calling this get food status method so get food status method accepts basically delegate right a status delegate but here what i am doing i am just passing this my food status which is nothing but a method name so my food status here is a static method that accepts int parameter right and based on that int value it is going to print it the statements like food order received preparing food packing the food in transit delivered and if nothing gets matched then this default statement is going to get printed like you know order getting cancelled so basically we need to understand over here whenever we are going to pass this my food status method as a method name in this get food status right and here we have this status delegate right so what is happening a status delegate is going to point this my food status so basically it is just you know whenever we are going to execute this obj status delegate and whatever the food status variable is having it is going to get passed in this method my food status and based on that this statement is going to get printed right so we have seen how we are going to use of delegate by calling from the client sides to the library right and getting the output at the same time when this you know the get food status is getting executed okay so at the same time we are going to get the status whenever the status gets change we are going to get you know printed into the console window okay let's see it by executing this example let me click this start button okay so here output is started getting appeared right so food order received next status preparing food packing the food in transit and then delivered right it got printed based on you know the status as in when the status you know gets changing at um, library side so it is received by the client application and it is just printing all those status in this console window so yeah we have seen the practical uses of delegates right okay so move on to the next concept instantiate delegate by using an anonymous method in c sharp yes we can create an instance of the delegate by using an anonymous method as well so let's see it with the help of example here i have written public delegate void my delegate string str what i'm doing over here i'm just you know created this delegate and gave name as a my delegate that accepts input parameter as a string and here it is void is a return type if you see this main method i am trying to instantiate delegate by using an anonymous method okay what is an anonymous method we need to understand right so uh, anonymous method is a method that has no name right and it is going to get created with the help of delegate keyword that's what i have written delegate string str console dot write line then this is the value is going to get you know printed 
and here obj my delegate and good morning what i'm doing over here is i am just going to call this anonymous method with the help of delegate instance i have given this input parameter as a good morning so the final output into the console window would be a string value and then good morning and connected value right it is going to get printed into this console window so yeah that's the way how we can instantiate delegate by using an anonymous method in c sharp okay we have seen uh, how to create an instance by using the anonymous method here we are going to see how we can create an instance using a lambda expression in c sharp okay if you see this example over here public delegate void my delegate it's the same delegate we have created earlier into the anonymous method right where we have given this you know delegate name is my delegate that accepts an input as a string and the return type is void if you see this main method i have instantiated this delegate using this lambda expression so str is nothing but the input parameter and it is just giving this you know lambda expression sign right so that this string basically str that we, it is going to work as an input parameter and this is the you know console dot write line is the body of you know this lambda expression that is going to get printed into the console window and the next statement i have written obj my delegate good morning basically i am just going to call this method which is defined by this lambda expression okay with the help of this you know delegate instance and i'm just you know passing this string parameter as a good morning so that the value so that the value would be you know printed into the console would be like you know a string value and then good morning so the same output what we have received in the anonymous method uses now here we are going to achieve it with the help of lambda expression so yes we can create an instance of the delegate by using the lambda expression as well advantages of delegate in c sharp as we have seen with the help of example how we can get advantage of delegate in c sharp main advantage i just listed down here for quick reference first we can take advantage of delegate for defining the callback methods second we can delegate to achieve loose coupling by reducing dependencies between the classes third publisher subscriber is the best scenario where we can get huge benefit by using delegates final and the fourth most it is the best suited for the gui based application now that brings me to end of my session to sum up in this session first we looked at what is delegates and then we saw how to implement delegates in a program with real time example and finally we examined the advantages of using it in my next video we will learn about built in delegates like function delegate action delegate and predicate delegate and its uses right if you like this video hit the like button share it with your friends and colleagues subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already thank you see you in the next video